All right, I see some people showing up. Thank you again for tuning in to Ask an Athlete Ambassador Live. My name is Lauren Lubin April, Senior Director of Community Impact at the Women's Sports Foundation and your host. As I've been saying, sports may be on pause, but here at the Women's Sports Foundation, we keep playing no matter what. Each and every week, I'm talking to some of the greatest female athletes in the world and featuring some of our truly amazing WSF community partners. Today's guest I personally love. She is a two-time Winter X Games gold medalist. She has earned a total of six Winter X Game medals. She is a four-time U.S. free skiing open champion. She is in the Guinness World Records, and a record holder for that matter. She is a WSF past president. She always goes big. She hails from the state of Utah. It is Greta Elizen. I'm going to go get her right now. What up, Greta? Hey! How, you've got your headband on. Can you hear me okay? Is this fine? I can hear you. If you want to come up a little closer, I might hear you a little bit better. I have you kind of on my um my bookshelf. So I just want to make sure it's all good. Hold on. I want to be able to like use my arms. Let's see. You can use your arms. You can use whatever. I was looking for my headband because I had a feeling you'd wear it and I couldn't find it, but I'm happy you're rocking it. You look like uh, Billie Jean King, our founder. Thank you. I'm, um, you know, I'm, I've, I've got some good inspiration. I feel like I was going to bring some of, um, some of the thematic history of the Women's Sports Foundation into our new virtual setting. Did you put on makeup before this session as well, like me? Well, I was going to, I was just about to comment and say your makeup looks amazing because <laughs> I did like a fresh, like a really quick paint on my face. <laughs> Well, I don't know if you've been following my Instagram, but I asked all my followers, hey, give me your makeup tips because I want to be able to do things like this. This is my first ever live chat. And I'm like, how are you, am I supposed to look good? Because I don't know how to do it. So I didn't get my makeup, yeah. but I have. And I, I learned how to do my makeup in New York City at the annual Salute to Women in Sports from going to like the makeup stuff before we go into the show. Amazing. I my best. I love how the Women's Sports Foundation is the uh, source of your makeup tutorial. And, right? <laughs> and business attire. First time I ever saw like business attire was on my way out to New York City too. Yeah. Go get Fantastic. Me. See, Women's Sports Foundation is here to serve and help with leadership development for all athletes. Um, Greta, first of all, I must say I am very touched that you chose Ask an Athlete Ambassador to be your first live Instagram oh, live. It really well, means a lot. Thank, and, you for, thank you for inviting me. Thank you for giving me a reason to dress up. My day was a little crazy today. I've been wiping poop off, you know, little boys. <laughs> I've been picking up. Um, well, you have kids. Let's let's start there. That's why you're doing that. I yeah. All little children. <laughs> and, and I'm a stay-at-home mom now, so this is what I do. And it's it's crazy with COVID. There's no daycare. There's no school. There's no babysitters. So it's just like full on, which is fine, but it's just like it's hard to do stuff like this. Well, I think that's a nice segue because, first of all, I wanted to wish you a happy Earth Day. Oh, yeah. Happy Earth Day to you, too. Yeah. And I feel like you're the perfect person to be talking to today because you're a skier. You're an, Al an, Al an alpine skier. A, yeah, there's your skis. You're a freestyle skier. Your sport exclusively exists in nature outside. Uh, so this is kind of your sports day. But I was thinking, you know, you have made such an incredible career for yourself um, being outside. Today, we're kind of stuck inside and self isolating. How have you been mentally and physically adjusting and being a mom? I mean, it's been hard. This whole, it's just different. Like I'm a, a very, I'm a planner and I'm very goal oriented. And right yes. now I can't make any plans. Like I remember when we set up this schedule, like let's do um, a Women's Sports Foundation live chat a month ago. And I'm like, Lauren, that's so long from now, but here we are. <laughs> yeah. Anything else except be home and do this. It's hard, but I actually live in a really amazing place. I live in Utah 
And where I live is like right next to the mountains. So I can get outside. It's just harder because I can only go as far as the little people can go with me, you know, the little children. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's hard to adjust, but it's more like what I've been doing is just letting things go. Don't make plans, mm -hmm. just be in the moment. And seriously, no one is getting ahead right now. We're literally all in the moment right now. Yeah, it is. We're all in this together. And, um, it, you know, bringing it back even to Earth Day, this is our home together, you know, um, and, you know, celebrating and really recognizing the fact that um, this is, this is all of us. And I, I, you actually shared an interesting video with me, which I love. You're absolutely one of those cool moms. You have your kids at home skiing. First of all, I can't believe your kids are skiing already. I remember them when they were like infants. Oh, um, like Yep. Are you using them? Are you are you working out with your kids and getting them using them as a source of inspiration to stay active as a family? Right. So you asked me, like, how am I able to get through this time right now and like still be active? And actually being a stay at home mom, you're super active because you're always picking them up. You're always putting their stuff on going outside like you're always doing activities. So I've actually gotten like not as like active as like going on long treks or like, you know, pushing my tricks or whatnot. But I'm I'm super active and actually the hardest job in the world is being a stay at home mom. So it's, yeah, it's, I, I, it's actually this right now. I'm more busier in COVID than I am not in COVID or yeah. everyone. And I love to knit and I love to like bake and like do all these things, but I can't do any of that. Cause um, they're just like, you know, hounding me to do something else. So it's, this is actually a harder time for me than non COVID days. I, it's a, it's such a challenging time for everyone because there is um, we're we're all in new times. But it it sounds like your kids are your personal trainers at this point. <laughs> we read this book. I forget the name of it, but it's like oh, it's called Women in Sports. So it talks about yeah. all these like history figures in sports from I don't know, like just golf to whatever. And we look at this one page where there's like the muscle. You know, like the woman has. Like, yeah. the My son's like. Mama, you got to train. You got to get muscles like that. <laughs> and I'm like, shut up. <laughs> so yeah, they're definitely like, well, um, yeah, my little coaches. So yeah. definitely. <laughs> um, well, I see some comments already coming in, some viewers. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to run for viewers who are just tuning in and who haven't tuned in before. This is how it works. Greta, I have some more really exciting questions for you. But we will also, I will also be um, featuring questions from today's featured community partners. And we will be taking questions from live viewers. So if you have questions that you would like Greta to answer, start submitting them now. We have uh, the team at the WSF who will be compiling all of our questions. So as we continue, ask questions and we'll try to get to them at the end here. And then lastly, which is the most important part, I'm gonna challenge you to your favorite house fitness acti activity no skis required though because i have no skis i'm in new york challenge for you because you're gonna yeah yeah <laughs> I've, I've i've failed at almost all of the challenges so far so um the bar is set very low <laughs> okay so as you said this as a fun fact as you already mentioned this is your first instagram live but speaking of new ventures you started a podcast recently called what's your line with Greta with Greta um I've listened to a few of them you're an absolute natural I love them can you talk about what inspired you to start this podcast yeah, I started what's your line with Greta you can actually download it anywhere you find your podcast uh this last fall and I believe there's seven episodes now we just dropped a new episode and I'm actually in the hot seat so go check it out go oh, to flip go the script or check it out right now it's pretty funny like it's, yeah. it's, it's like I I've met so many incredible people throughout my career, skiing and traveling and meeting different uh, athletes from different sports. And I just wanted to have a chance to tell their story. And in addition, it's just like people that um, have always inspired me and maybe I haven't met them before, but I, I want to figure out how they got to where they got, like, what's, what's their line? Like, what were the steps they did? Mm -hmm. What made them stand out from the rest of the pack? So that's kind of what I go into um, with the podcast. So yeah, just check it out. What's your line with Greta and it's the best. It's like for me, because as you can see, I love to talk to people. And that's the hardest part about this whole COVID thing, too, is just not having interactions. And I wish I yeah. could be with you right now and just we could like, I don't know, just feel each other's energy, everything. It's just that that to me is like the best thing in the world. That's where it's the hardest. 
So yeah. stay at home and mom, this is my way of getting back into skiing, getting back to involved with sports, but also still able to be a stay at home mom, but just go in and record my shows every once in a while. Yeah, you have, um, and I'd like, I'd love to get into it as well, because you have such an illustrious career. I mean, again, you've set records, you have won multiple um, gold medals at the X Games, and you're also talking with some of these incredible athletes as well, just about um, the challenges that you face, right? From reaching, you know, reaching those top points, but then also coming back from adversity. Um, it's for me, um, I love listening to it, not only to recognize all the amazing things that you did. Uh... <laughs> she is my party inspiration, by the way. And they put them on sometimes and they know that they're super special to mama. So I say, can you just put those back? And they put them back. I don't let them run around with the X Games medals. The question that came out. Oh. Okay. So my follow-up question, where do you keep them in your house? Because I would have them like displayed at the, like immediately when you walk through the front door. Oh, I wish <laughs> that, but it's like, I don't know what, it's actually in this room here. I'll, I'll show you. We'll go on a little tour. Is this the ski room, by the way? Can you say? Oh, it's our office. This is where we do all of our office Okay. Work. So where business gets done. That's the GE Beefcake. That was back when Amazing. I was. Amazing. Signed that one. But these are where I keep my medals, right here. In my, I call it the Greta Shrine. That is Amazing. <laughs> There's my girl, Sarah Burke, who was the one that got me involved with the Women's Sports Foundation years ago. But yeah, they're all right here. We call it the Grinch Shrine. But we Those... try to put other things up too, but it's mostly my stuff. Yeah, and... you're, you're mostly like the coolest one, is, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, um, I'm uh, surrounded by, um, I have a broken clock above me, so I don't know how inspirational that is, but... Um... <laughs> It's just, I saw it earlier. It's like a beautiful like decor. It's so pretty, yeah. yeah. Just, I don't have anything like that. Yeah, I see it's like a it's cool. Yeah, it's very um mid-century modern. So okay, I want to get back to it because honestly, like I said, you are a record you're a world record holder. You go big, you go hard. I'm actually gonna pull up one of your <laughs> amazing highlights and, and talk through it. I'm gonna flip the screen here because I I never knew I had a um, fear of heights until I was watching this. And oh. yeah, so can you just set the stage as to what's going on here? Sorry, and I'm gonna flip the screen back because- My world record jump and it was um, kind of the, we were shooting this movie called Say My Name. It was a ski yeah. movie with a bunch of other skier girls and myself. and. We were just trying to figure out like how we could make this really cool um, spring shot. And that's, it's, I'm going to go off this jump called a hip where you go straight into it and then you land on the side. So now I'm probably going, I forget what it says, like 60 miles per hour and just like pushing my yeah. legs as I can. And then that is my favorite part right there when you just like, Ooh. you were over the whole thing. Flying. It's like the best feeling. And that was, since I was a little girl, I've just, that's like my drug flying like that. That's my drug. Yeah. That's, I'm addicted to that feeling. So that's why I had to go all the way. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> it's I honestly, so here's a little fun fact that you don't know. The first X Games I ever went to, Winter X Games in Aspen, you were competing at. And I just realized that today. What? So yeah, our stars, we were, we were aligned to meet at some point. Um, but it's, I remember being at the X Games and there were all these skiers and snowboarders just flying above my head. And it was just, it's really so impressive. And I recognize for myself, I just don't think I have the courage to do that. Where do you find that fearlessness, that courage, that inspiration to take risks? Was that something you always had or is it like learned uh, along the way? No, it was like, since I was a little girl, I would like climb the refrigerator and people would come over to my mom's house. Your and, like, parents dream. <laughs> yeah, what's Greta doing on top of the refrigerator again? She's just climbing. And then I yeah. go up the trees and just see how high I could get up. And then I like to jump off the trees too. And then I also had this like <laughs> um, cabin that I grew up in and I would shimmy my way up the, like the fireplace, like the rocks. And then I would go on the roof, you know, over and then I would jump off. One time I remember actually getting in trouble because like a neighbor's mom called my mom and she was on a conference call saying myself and my brother were on the roof again. They need to get, 
And my mom was like on a super serious like conference call for work. And she's like, what are you guys doing? But like, we just, yeah. Troublemaker. It was, it was just like, just trying to, you know, push the limit, see what you could do. And I felt, I never felt like I was going to fall, you know, doing these things. So yeah, just from a young age and then skiing, you know, baby steps. I remember my first jump I ever took and I fell, but I just remember that feeling of being weightless and being in the air. And I'm again, just addicted to that feeling. How often, I mean, first of all, how do you even begin to build up to something like that and some of these tricks and things that you do? Because it's not like you're just like, all right, I'm just gonna stick this. Right. You know, what is the process of training for something like that? It's since I, w I think I went off my first jump when I was probably four or five. You know, I, I still remember it in my mind. My brother went and my mom went. My mom was a really good ski jumper too. Like she would always go off a jump and do a spread eagle, it's called. So I always knew women could jump because of my mom. And then it's just baby steps. Like you just find like bigger and bigger jumps. And then with my sport, um, skiing, it actually, we developed like a sport called free skiing and we just built yep. like jumps. And, and it just came to the point where I'd always seen these photos of these snowboarders doing like a really big air off that jump, a hip. And I'm like, I would love to have a photo like that in my house one day of me just going like super big. And that's where it started. I, I mean, it just like, and I would do it again tomorrow if like it was built, I would go do it. Cause it's, it's seriously that much fun. Well, not only do you have a photo, you are a movie star. You've been featured in films, uh, just showcasing your incredible talent. And if I, I'm sure our viewers at home are, are, are familiar with those films. I was thinking today, I'm like, I got to go back and watch those because they're just so cool. Um, but it's, you know, I, I love being able to pull back to the fact that it starts when you're young, you know, it starts when you're a child. That's where these dreams are from. And I think for so many of our young viewers, especially uh, girls who have submitted questions, you know, can you just talk about how important it is to start playing and getting out there when you're young? That's, that's how it begins. Yeah. Like I, I actually never, I don't even remember learning how to ski, like skis on my feet have always just been a part of me going outside, playing in trees, getting dirty. I played baseball, hockey, soccer. I mean, sometimes for girls, but a lot of times I was the only girl, me and like my best friend, Stephanie, were like the only ones there. Oh, my mm -hmm. brother. And I think um, his Nitro USA, that's my bro. Uh, Hey, bro. He is the reason, actually, that I am so athletic, because I was always, yeah, that's awesome. he, he's a year and a half older than me. His name's Knut Eliasson, and he's a pro snowboarder, and I was always trying to be as good as him. I would actually run into his room and count how many trophies he had, and then I'd run back to my room and count how many I was having. Like, I just, I was always comparing myself to him. So I, I'm super lucky to have an older brother and a dad that would take me um, skiing all the time. Like, I was so lucky, and I'm just, like, I feel so bad for those girls that don't have that older brother or that dad that yeah. just, I was just one of the guys. I was like a brother too. It was, wasn't anything different. Yeah. Or, support. I'm just, just go, go try. Like, I mean, no one's going to be good, right? The first time you try it, you're not going to be good, right? You're not going to be the best. Yeah. But the time you try more and more, the better you'll get. Yeah. And that's confidence building itself. Yeah. Um, before we switch gears to our, submitted questions my last question to you is are you still hitting it hard like are you still going after those big jumps because i know the older i get i ski but i'm not doing anything crazy i'm like i'll meet you at the bottom intact <laughs> yeah so going through like pregnancy and i know a lot of my friends right now they're pregnant or just had their first babies um it's it's crazy how it like can shift um, your body and your mind but honestly now that I have, like, I'm literally, I, I'm less, um, I weigh less than when I, before I started having babies now, and, like, my muscle, everything's back, and when I'm on my skis, I can literally do everything that I've learned before, so it's, I'm actually really excited, and I'm super bummed about this whole COVID, because yeah. I go to Woodward Park City and start flipping and spinning again, because it's all still here, and yeah, I want to, actually, I want to keep pushing my skiing now. I didn't think that was possible three years ago when I was pregnant, but now, yeah, Oh, it's possible and I'm I'm pumped. That's exciting. It it feels it makes your mind but and I don't maybe I don't have to go as big as that thirty one foot jump, but at least I can, you know, still show that moms can go twenty feet, you know, like something like that, whatever it is. See, I told you you're a cool mom. <laughs> <laughs> a very cool mom. Yeah, you know, I could just maybe hit the twenty feet. <laughs> uh, easily, easily, Lauren. Easily. easily. 
Not even like. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I'll I'll I meet you at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So next up, we actually we have questions from our community partners, and we'll be taking questions from viewers. So again, if you're watching and you have questions, keep submitting them. We are catching them in our live feed now. So type away. Um, today's featured community partner is Playworks New England, and they are a part of our Sports for Life program in partnership with ESPNW. And Playworks New England is a leading nonprofit leveraging play as a tool to promote healthy behaviors, increase social emotional learning, and improve social climate. So they have a couple of a couple of really great questions for you. And you've sort of answered this, but maybe um, Maybe give a little bit of, of uh, suggestion, activity suggestion. The first question is, how are you staying active right now? Okay, so I actually started doing this thing. And we're getting little... some love from Playwork New England. I, I... If you want to say hi. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> um, right now is, what I have actually done is I started making a schedule. Even though you can't plan too far ahead, you can at least plan your week. So I'm doing 45 minutes a day of like being active before mm -hmm. I wake up. So I do um, like a bunch of exercises, maybe like just run around like the block or in my house. Um, just like they're called hit high intensity workouts. So you just do like yep. being like push ups or like um, squats, lots of jumping, walking lunges. So that's what I do. And that makes me feel so good. If I can do yeah. if I can do that every um, like three times a week is what I'm doing makes me feel so much better. So I would say that, just make a little weekly goal of that you're gonna work out this many times. And you can do everything from home, all body weight, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I love that. Just even having a parameters to work with, like 45 minutes, three times a week, whatever mm -hmm. I can fill in that. Yep, and if for me, it's right before the kids wake up. That's where I'm like, I get it in and then, I, then I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take some of that. Um, next question is, what did you learn about resilience during your injury that you think applies to your current crisis and our situation? And maybe, do you mind just going, you know, for people who are watching who maybe aren't aware of your injury, just talking about it a little bit and then talking about your resilience? Yeah, so in 2012, um, I was kind of, tr I was transferring over back from film to park skiing because the Olympics just announced that they were going to have free ski slope style and half pipe in the Olympics. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go back into the park and I'm gonna start being a slope style skier again. And everything was going well, like training. I was learning so many tricks. Like I, it just was crazy. Like, everything was working out so well. Like it was just like a perfect day. Yeah. And that's all that um, my really good friend and mentor, Sarah Burke had had a big crash in Park City mm -hmm. and she ended up passing away. And at the, the same day that she um, passed away, I tore my ACL. So my ACL, first injury of my entire career was this day. I mean, this this happened. And, and I do think my injury was actually like a gift. It was like, okay, Greta needs to stop and like yeah. think about what's going on. Because believe it, like I hadn't stopped skiing since I was three years old. Like I was just like, go, go, go. Yeah. Next goal, next competition, next whatever it was. It was never like a break. And so I took my injury as like a reflection time. Like, okay, mm -hmm. what, I mean, what is, what's so great about me? I mean, am I, it's therapy, PS, but it's like, what was like- I can name a few. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more than just a skier. What are my other like talents and things and what yeah. makes, that's what I took. I was like, okay, I'm gonna, you know, learn how to take care of my body learn how to take care of me, find out my other strengths. Like I have such a great network in Minnesota from, um, we have like this cabin life, love, like lake life it's called. And it's just like all my friends and family are there and, and they would like still be my friends and family even if I didn't ski. So it's like learning about those relationships and taking time to really foster those relationships. And then um, just like skiing, like, because I want to ski. I wasn't, I think yeah. when I, before the injury, I was skiing because, okay, there's this goal that I, kind of was like I created for myself and I um I was skiing to make it to the Olympics that was the only the only reason right I was like oh I'm gonna learn all these tricks for this so I can win this medal and do this but instead I'm like oh I ski because I I like to ski I like to have fun I like to be outside you know Earth Day I love snow I love being with people um it just reminded me why I ski it's not for the medal it's because the actual enjoyment of the sport I think that's 
such a great point for young athletes who may be watching this and, and will be watching this. Careers can be, you know, up and down and take so many different turns. And I love the point that you made about reforming your relationship with the sport. It, you know, it, it is a relationship that you have with your sport and having sometimes big adversity in your life can be a gift to really reframe the relationship that you have and refocus how you want to approach it. So, yeah, I mean, of yeah. course, when Sarah, you know, died and passed away, I mean, that's not obviously, but like with the injury, it was just like, this was, it was like a stop and it was like, you need to refocus and you need to, and your friend is telling you to stop and like, look at what yeah. you figure this out. And what are you going to do now? Yeah, well, you said you were looking for, you know, trying to figure out what other skills that you had. And uh, you're also an amazing dancer. So for people at home, uh, that's another skill that uh, Greta has. Okay, <laughs> here is um, the, the last question from uh, Playworks New England. And it's what is the most important thing sports has taught you about leadership? Oh, I mean, I learn something about leadership every single day when I'm interacting with people and playing a sport, but I would say that the most important is confidence. You know, like knowing that you can ski something better than someone, knowing that you can hit a ball better, farther, or whatever it is, it just like, it gives you this boost of energy where you're like, actually, not that you're like better than that person, but it just gives you confidence where you feel sure about yourself. And if yeah. you something to say it's you're not scared to say it so for me it's always brought you know like even thinking about like our president Donald Trump right now you know like how he's like I guess a really good golfer and whatever I'm like I'm not scared of that man like at all <laughs> let's go to a golf course and we'll see who wins and I'm like <laughs> he plays way more than I do but I know that I can hit a ball like I'm pretty I'm almost positive farther than he can and it's just it's stuff like that like knowing that you have that confidence into different yeah. sports, it's just like it really resets your mind well you take that confidence and that's what sports does and you've taken that confidence off the slopes you've served as our as a women's sports foundation president for two years um in such a big leadership role can you just talk about maybe what that role meant for you serving as you know a leader of of the foundation well, i mean when i went to the women's sports foundation the first event i went annual salute to women in sports I got to see all these incredible leaders and at the time it was Amy Mullins who was president and then Jessica Mendoza was president-elect and I was like I want to be them like how can I become them and that's what I think is so cool about being a leader is like you're putting yourself out there so people can I mean they can just be inspired and maybe one day do that too and that's what it was for me I was like oh I'm yeah. that it was, and I when I was president I'm like I can't believe people are looking at me like this probably. I mean, I, I didn't, I wasn't thinking like, oh yeah, she wants to be like, it wasn't like that. It was just like, I was, it was, it was cool. It was really cool to be president too. And for me, it was just like, I just love those women so much that it was just like, oh, let's, how do we get together more? How can we interact more? That was all I cared about. Well, thank you for inspiring so many of, around you. And I've had the pleasure of working um, by your side and getting to know you. So it's been personally a rewarding thing for, for myself. Um, we have a couple questions from our audience before we move to the fitness challenge. So are you ready for that? I'm ready for the fitness challenge. Okay. The first question that I saw come through a while back is, are you still practicing your golf game? I know not now specifically, but in general. I, I haven't played since last fall, but I have like the mat and everything. So I'm just waiting for, again, the kiddos to kind of go away and then I can hit the balls. But yes, I'm still playing, but not as much as before. And your, your, your next competitor is going to be the, the president of the United States. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Small goals. Small goals. President, Mr. President, we have to walk. You got to walk. Okay. Okay. No carts. No carts allowed. Got it. <laughs> if you need a referee. Yeah. Do they have referees in golf? No. But I'll be a spectator. <laughs> okay. Your caddy. Got it. Um, Okay, so next question is, do you let your boys, oh yeah, we've already did that. Do you let, let your boys wear your X Games medals? What is your advice for young families to get into snow sports? Oh, this is a great question. I mean, hey, my, 
<laughs> yeah, my family got involved because both my um, mom and dad were super mountain people. They loved to ski and this and that. You just bring them along. Like, don't think of it as like, oh, um, like it's going to be a, a hindrance or a burden to bring the kids. It actually gets you out more. Like, you actually ski more when your kids can ski too. So I would say just buy the pass, you know, and the kids don't need passes until they're like 10 or 12. So just pack it up and go. Just do it. Commit. Do it. Buy the gear. Go. Go. You just do it. it. It's like the, the most amazing family sport in the entire yeah. world. But you can play this sport with your family your entire life. Like yeah. all the way to your plus, whatever it is. So it's a great way to get the family together and to instill confidence in your children. So And they're going to be active and um, fit. Absolutely. Outside of skiing, what other sports did you play growing up? I played what soccer, baseball, hockey. I did gymnastics for like two sessions, but I was really bad at stretching and all the other <laughs> things. I quit, even though I wish I would have stuck with gymnastics. But uh, yeah, water skiing, skateboarding, ski racing. That was pretty much it. But we did a lot of sports like for dry land and stuff like gym sports. So, I mean, I played everything. Football was my favorite, you know, like throwing the football. Oh, yeah. That was my favorite. Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> next time, next time we'll throw the football together. Uh, New York City Women's Sports Foundation. Um, what's it called? Like with the flags? Foosball. Yeah, foosball. Um, no, like we're going to go not – we're going to like actually go play, uh, play football. Oh yeah. Play football oh, with the flags. I thought you said with the pegs. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That accent came through very, very thick. <laughs> All right. So on that note, Greta, we're going to take everybody through your favorite home activity. I'm going to try not to fall on my behind here. You got it. And up. Let's see if I can. Yeah, we're going to get up. I, guess, I wonder if I can film it over here. Hold on. I got to get something. Is this, a, my phone. Is this a standing um, event or what? Yeah, you got to, it's like a squat. It's called the ACL test. Ooh, okay. So I'm going to move to here. I think this is probably better. Okay, on my two legs. Okay. And then you're going to squat down. All the way down. One oh, leg. Oh, no, Greta. Can yeah, you do that? Yeah, you're just making, you're just going to make me fall. Okay, let's see it. So stand up your leg. I just did one. Okay, just one leg? Yeah, one leg. And then you got to squat your butt. There's no way. I, I don't know if I can go past this. You can do it. Okay. That's called the ACL test. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let me try the other one. Okay, okay. Try the other one. But both How many of these do you do? I, you just got to do it once. It's just a check. Do you see? Wait, do you see my knee? Watch watch my knee shake. I know. You got to work out a little more, girl. You got to get that little <laughs> more. <girl. laughs> I'll show you. Let's see if I can do it one more time. I'll show you. Okay. Okay, I hope viewers at home are trying this too and not just laughing at me. See that? Yeah, that's impressive. That's a skier's ACL test. All right, here we go. All right, I think I got it. You can nope, do it. I don't, don't have it. One, one more time. It's kind of about balance and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm going to have to practice these every day, and then I'm going to send you a video. Yeah, but you post it. Though. Okay, so for viewers at home, how many of those should they do? You just test it. You just, it's literally just testing your ACL. So one, just one time, all the way one down. One time? Yep. But what if you wanted to make that a workout? Well, it is a workout. Think about it. You can't, I mean, it I is. you're not like super sweated, or whatever, but like, think about being able to do that. It's the little things. You just gotta. Oh, I got it. Okay. <laughs> Very quick. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Greta, you are Amazing. One of my favorites, honestly. Thanks Thank to all you. 20 viewers. We love you so much. This is fun. That's 20 viewers of our life. Can they watch and anywhere or is this it? This is like they get it or don't get it. Well, we send this out. So okay. we actually have, yeah. All 
right, there'll I'll... be more viewers on the back end. It's going to be live for um, 24 hours. Oh, perfect. Yeah. If Thank you, Greta. You know, cleaning diapers or whatever it is, they can watch it later. Absolutely. Perfect. Thanks so much. Happy Earth Day. Happy Earth Day. I'll let you cancel me out. I don't